Right, so on to some questions. I've had lots and lots of questions this this month. So, uh, so yeah, I shall try and get through them as quickly as I possibly can. They do all require a bit of a demo. A lot of them do. And I do have a special guest. I'm very excited about my special guest. It's a bit silly, really, um, for the uh, dips and drops section of this podcast. Okay, right. So first one, one from Mark West, actually, last night. I thought I'd bring it actually uh, to the podcast as well because it's a great question. I never really thought about it myself. The question is, when leading the sway, there are three positions I want to get it, I want to get the ladies into. How do I achieve that? So time for demo time. Right. So first of all, the sway is generally a move where you'd step away, you sway your partner into the right hand side, and then you step back. Okay. But Mark was saying there's three kind of different positions he wants to get his partner into. How do you get into those? So the first position is when you actually lead your partner and then you twist to the side. And then you can do some sway basics going from side to side. Okay, the second one is a straightforward sway. So you lead your partner in and we all stay facing the same direction. And the third one is where you bring your partner and you kind of block them on the hip and then you can kind of do some rocks from side to side. So how do you go about leading all three of those? Very, very simple. Okay, the first one is if you want your partner to over rotate back, then all you're going to do with your hand is take it further out to the right hand side. That will over rotate your partner that way. Therefore, the lead to come back around this way is nice and simple. If you want your partner to just keep on a straight line, then all you're looking to do is lower the hand straight down. So therefore, your partner will have momentum purely just to do half a turn. If you just want your partner to do a quarter of a turn, then it's the same lead as the lowering it down, only you just do half of the lead. Okay, so if you want to do a full lead to bring your partner in halfway round, then you do lowering the hand fully just want them to come halfway so therefore you can block them on the hip and again do these hip blocks then you do a short lead just a very dynamic lead at that point there so um, so yeah i thought it was a really interesting question on that um another question that elaine the chip and i asked me on wednesday again i thought i'd bring to the podcast is why as a lady am i meant to step back on my right foot now something that zoe often talks about is taking a step on every half beat and the best way to do that is that every single time you step is you're literally stepping in time with the music. You can vary the distance that you are stepping, but generally you're looking to step on every half beat. And basically it fits with the rhythm to step back on the right foot. But also regarding tension, if you step back on your left foot, ladies, then the tension you're gonna have is what we call a monkey swing moment, okay? If you step back on your right foot, then you will have much greater tension in your arm and you'll find it much easier to follow your partner. There's a number of other reasons as well, but generally, ladies, if you can go back on your right foot, it makes a huge difference to the lead's ability to make you do whatever he wants you to do on the dance floor, of course. Um, question from my father. Hello, father. Um, as a beginner, which is more important, having rhythm or learning the moves? I did consider the answer to this one and the answer I came up with is, they are as equally important as the other one, if I'm honest. So you kind of need to learn the shape of a move to start with. Um, after that, kind of, then hopefully that the music's there. For most people, when they very first start, hello, Kieran. Um, when you very first start, what most people tend to do is they're just concentrating on moving their body, moving their arms, whatever it may be. And the music is just somewhere in the background. It's kind of like this plodding thing that's going on. As you get better and better, somebody asked me once, what was the ultimate in dancing? And the answer I always give is the ultimate in dancing is doing the most complex moves that fit the music perfectly. So that's kind of the A1, I would suggest. That's my own, my own opinion. So, uh, so yeah, they're as equal as each other. Generally, the theme will be that you'll do the mechanics of a move to start with, and then you'll kind of adapt that to the music. Hopefully, at some point, you'll then be able to do some more musicality. Right, next part then. Uh, so these are... Oh, this is... Um, from the lovely Des, thank you Des as always. Okay, so what can I expect in a private session I won't get in a workshop? Well, good question. So in a workshop, generally have between 30 to 40 people is the norm in a workshop. Obviously in a private session, it's just one-to-one. -one. Uh, a number of the teachers have a program called Coach's Eye as well, so you can video it and slow it down and analyze the types of things. Uh, for myself as well, I have big mirrors in my studio that I use. Uh, so there's lots of different things that we can do actually within private lessons. and. Uh, even if you're the most experienced dancer in the world, you can go back and do private lessons. So I can't recommend them highly enough. Uh, and it's just that one-to-one -one feel. Quite often as well, what you get in a workshop is the teacher can see everything that's going on. Uh, in a private lesson, the teacher will not only be able to see, but also be able to feel what's going on as well. And how the dance feels can be completely different than how it looks as well. So I uh, definitely highly recommend all private lessons for everybody, he says plugging them away. Uh, next one, what can I ask a taxi dancer? Can they do more than basic moves? 
why don't they focus on connection exercises? Um, well, certainly all the tax dancers we have in our franchise uh, for myself, and so we do focus on connection exercises. One of the things that we do in our franchise, I can't speak for what other franchises do, of course. Um, but you can ask a tax dancer anything, whether they can give you the answer or not is another matter, of course. Uh, lots of people do ask the taxi dancers about help for the intermediate moves on the night that taxi dancers are taxiing, okay? If you may notice that during the intermediate class, the taxi dancers aren't there, they are running the taxi session. So it's not the easiest thing for them to kind of figure it out because they haven't taken part in the class. Um, so if you do have a question, then please do feel free to ask them. They can obviously come and ask the teacher at that point there. But you can ask a taxi dancer anything if you want. Um, I'll say whether they can give you the answer or not. They know all the basic moves. They've been given some training on how to teach or how to dance all of the beginner moves and they're more than happy to help. That's the reason they're chosen as taxi dancers. They're all volunteers and in all honesty I don't think any Ciroc franchise could run without the help of taxi dancers. You all do an amazing job so uh, do keep that going everybody. But uh, yeah. Um, what is frame and why is it important? Um, Frame for me is one of the most important things in dancing. So for instance, the way I now teach, hello Lindsay as well, um, and everybody else is joining. Um, so one of the f things for me in frame, so for instance, I teach a slingshot slightly different these days. Don't tell <laughs> HQ this, but, uh, but yeah, so when I teach a slingshot, for instance, and I'm stepping back and I bring my partner into the side, I, I no longer teach pushing with the arms anymore because actually what I was finding is that people were overleading it and the ladies were flying off to the side and it wasn't very nice. When I was doing the follow part, I personally hated the way that people led the slingshots and people often found it the most difficult of the beginner moves. So what I now teach is kind of keeping the frame in the same place and simply moving your body backwards and that's enough to lead your partner forwards. And it kind of told the men that they didn't have to hoof their partners from side to side. So, uh, so yeah, and if you're in frame, for, in boring frame, for instance, if you're doing a mambo move, whatever it may be, uh, then yes, just holding that top line should act like a swan is the uh, principle behind it. So the top line stays nice and stable whilst underneath all of the hips should be doing as much as possible. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, frame, very important to try and get lots of it going correct, okay? Right, so we're now kind of moving on to uh, the second section of this, which is all about dips and drops. A couple of questions that are coming in about dips and drops as well, okay? So first one from the lovely Richard Chandler. Uh, lovely outfit on Wednesday, by the way, Richard. Okay, so he says, as well as checking at the start of a dance, if a follow is okay with dip stroke drops, is it a good idea to say during the dance ballroom drop or neck duck drop or whichever as you start the move? Would this be good so follow isn't taken by a surprise stroke scared? or bad that they might preempt the move or do the wrong move, okay? Um, I don't have any problem with the odd verbal command, okay? So the classic one, although I don't teach it too often these days, but the classic one that lots of people do as a verbal command is the Colombian, which is a walking move. Uh, it's actually very difficult to lead that particular move if you don't have the frame right, going back to the previous question, of course. Um, so lots of people use say the Colombian and then off you go as that. Um, however, if you have a verbal command, you say, ballroom drop and the lady goes what and you say ballroom drop and they if they haven't done a ballroom drop before then it's just jargon they would have absolutely no idea what you're talking about that would create more confusion than actually it would help so i would avoid verbal leads unless you're with a particular fixed partner and they know exactly what you're talking about but in truth the ballroom drop is a very obvious lead because you're going to change the handhold into the if i do an open ballroom drop into the open handhold and therefore or i call it the hanging on for dear life drop. Um, so that's quite an obvious one to do. Um, so yes, definitely at the beginning of a dance, do say to your partner, are you okay with dips and drops? People have back injuries, whatever it may be, or simply I know so lots of people are quite scared to do them. So uh, they've had a bad experience in the past, for example. Okay, so, so yeah, I would definitely say, do, do ask your question. Uh, Okay, Donna's just put, wonder if the owner should be on the follower to say they don't do dips and drops. Hard for leaders to always remember to ask first. It's a very good point, Donna. Yes, if you do have an injury, as a lady, I know lady last night had an injury, so she was like, I can't do X, Y, and Z move. And that's absolutely fine. So yes, if you do have an injury, just say, please don't do any dips and drops. I've hurt my back, whatever it may be. So that's a nice way to do it as well. Because uh, otherwise, if you're a man, you're asking every single time, and it's the third time you dance with that person that night, you don't need to ask every time. Um, but yeah, it's a nice, polite thing to do, okay? Um, so regarding doing a uh, checking at the start of dance, that's great. Telling the person what's gonna happen, 
probably would suggest not to just have better technique which we'll talk about in a moment right time is flying by okay so the next one is should ladies take all their own weight during a dip or a drop okay we'll come on to this in technique in a moment but one of the things i would always say to ladies is that unless you trust the man explicitly and it is a particular type of move okay um, unless it's a particular type of move always take your own weight okay i'm 13 stone i was doing the follow part last night i did some dips and drops i take all of my own weight okay i have no problem with that i can still get to a fairly decent angle i don't need to worry too much about it i don't have to trust what the man's doing which is always very very helpful okay so let's move on to some dips and drops then. so the first question is always Sorry, regarding, sorry, go back to the weight doing a dip or a drop. It depends on the move. If it's a ballroom drop, for instance, and you're horizontal down to the ground, no, you're not taking your own weight. That's more of an advanced move, okay? But a normal intermediate doing a high first lean or something like that, then absolutely, ladies, take all of your own weight. But if you are going further than the tipping point, then the man will be taking a lot of your own weight. But that's down to kind of fixed partners, that type of thing. Right, so uh, one of the questions that's always asked me is, I had one lady once when I used to dance up in Wolverhampton, apologies for the bad accent, is she said, I'm fine with dips and drops, but I don't do seducers. And I was like, okay. And then the next question was, what's the difference between a dip, drop, seducer, lean? Kind of what is the difference between them all? In all honesty, they're all kind of the same thing, really. Uh, leans are generally where you go to the side of the man, okay, which we'll come on to in a minute. Dips, drops, seducers, just kind of different names for doing them all, really. So it's kind of the same principle. Right, let's do some basics then, okay? So on a dip and drop, first of all, I'm very strong about this, and soon we'll have the uh, my guest my guest appearance, okay? But from the male perspective, okay, one of the things you're always looking to make sure you do is that when you do your lean, is first of all, when you bring your partner into in front of you, you pause, unless you're with a fixed partner, okay? Always pause. Weight should be on your right foot as you're doing the lunge, okay? So weight's on your right foot, you're then lunging to your left-hand side, okay, with that position there. And one of the main things I would say, now I've suffered with a bad back for 20 plus years, okay? So one of the main things that lots of men do is they twist their back like this, okay? Now, I did check, check this out, so it is an official thing, and that is if you twist like that, and effectively what you're doing is putting all of the weights on your L5, L6 disc and multiplying it by 10. So I mentioned a minute ago I'm 13 stone. So all of a sudden you've got 130 stone, if I'm being your follow, on the tiny part of your back. Okay, so if that's not enough to discourage you, I don't know what is. All right, but why do men twist? Men twist because they think their palm's going to fall over. Why do their palm's think their foot going to fall over? Sometimes they don't have correct technique. So we'll, it's a two-way thing. The old phrase of if it goes wrong, it's the man's fault. Complete rubbish. Ladies, you're responsible for getting your part right. So back to the men's basics, okay? So men, you're lunging to your left-hand side. Keep your feet parallel, okay? You don't want to lunge forwards. That gets, I'll show you from this way. If you lunge forwards, your weight goes forwards again. That's not great for tipping over. So we're lunging to the left-hand side, keeping our back upright. Left hand, if we're throwing the arm underneath the back, which I always teach these days, left hand is between the lady's shoulder blades. Right hand men should be in front of the lady's hip, okay? Now again, the reason lots of men twist is because they think their palm's gonna fall over and they bring their hand round the back, quite often kind of hugging up there as well. Love that, ladies, they really do. Okay, but men, the hand should be on the hips as you sink down, it's just in that position there because ladies should take all of their own weight, okay? So that's that first part, okay? So men lunging to the left, left hands behind the lady's back, right hands in front, and you should be able literally to do jazz hands. Don't do that necessarily while in a dip, that does scare ladies, okay? So that's the first bit. Ladies, from your perspective, okay, one of the key things which I say to every single ladies is that when you come round, okay, whichever move it may be, let's use a basic high first lean. So the man throws the hand underneath, you come round, you bring your feet together, place the weight onto your left foot. And this is the key part for me, ladies, is that what lots of ladies do at that point there is they simply, as they, they don't take a step back and they just shoot their left leg forward. So I just bring, I'm afraid you're gonna to get to see my legs now. Hello, everybody. Okay, so what lots of ladies do is they bring their feet together and then they just shoot their left leg forwards. Now I'll explain why in a minute that's not great with my lovely partner. But ladies, what you're looking to do is that when you bring your feet together, weight goes onto your left foot, you take another step back, keep the knees together, then you can slide forwards. And as you can see, I don't need anybody. I'm still at a 45 degree angle at that point. So ladies, feet together, taking a step back, knees together, then you can slide forwards. And we commit all of our weight, ladies, onto that back foot. There should be no weight on the front foot. However, 
don't kick your leg up in the air if you're wearing a short skirt nobody wants to see that okay so feet together take a step back then you can sink down like so okay so there's that first part now why is it that we want to therefore have the step back okay so i'm going to bring in my special guest welcome sid okay so <laughs> I'm going to hold on to the neck. I know it does look like I'm strangling him, okay, but I'm not genuinely, okay? Now, when we come into this T position, I can't believe I'm using sit, but never mind, okay? And what we're looking for is we're looking to both go at the same time. So we're both moving at the same time, okay? Now, ladies, if you don't step back, the men are still going this way. What you're going to do is go that way, okay? And therefore, fall down to the ground. That's when the men often collect you and tip down like that because they want to to not let you drop. So ladies, you're always looking to move with the man. That's why you do that step back at the same time, okay? Now, just very quickly regarding spare arm, okay? I'm waiting for, thank you for somebody to make the comment on Sid. Okay, so ladies, spare arm, okay? First of all, hello, I can do it with our Sid. Right, so ladies, with your spare arm, what you're looking for is the arm comes across your body to start with, lower the middle finger down. As you're doing your step back, so I'll show you from this way. As you're doing your step back, ladies, you unwrap the arm and look out to the side. Okay, so that's what you're looking to do. Try never to have palm up. That looks terrible. It looks like you're serving dinner plates at that point. And ladies, just look at the hand and then follow the arm round as you're doing the step. Sorry, I'm falling off balance there. Okay, so that's one of the things. Uh, <laughs> yes, Zoe has been replaced by Sid on this occasion. Okay, so that's one of the things for the ladies. Men, what do you do with spare arm? You're holding on to the ladies. So on this occasion, you're doing nothing at all. All right. So there's that first part for you okay second part is leans because i'm running out of time very very quickly okay now a normal side lean so let's for instance do a comb lean and we're doing it to the side again men from your perspective the principle is is you're lunging to the side and you're looking to keep the side of your body as straight as you can try not to banana it or what i have seen sometimes is men lunging and then sticking their hip out that's really painful for the ladies okay and then the other part men is on the exit to a lean is you're pushing off on your right thigh and then standing the ladies up using your body to push your partner up what you want to try and avoid as i've said many times in the past is the elvis exit where you step down and then you go uh -huh, like that and you hoof your partner out not wonderfully pleasant for the ladies okay so that's the bit for the men from the lady perspective okay again what you're looking for as you come round, feet are together you're looking to lean into the man. Obviously, I can't lean because I haven't got anybody else. I'm afraid Sid is not going to support me on this occasion. So, as we do the lunge, ladies, okay, all you're looking to do, keep the feet together. What you can do, I can show you very quickly with my legs, okay, is that you can bring your left foot up to your right, and then you're looking to have the foot facing down, nice and vertical, and then, ladies, just bring the knee across. Okay, so that looks quite ladylike at that point there. With your arm, you've got two options, I suggest, ladies. Either option number one, again, across the far shoulder, you can take the arm out to the side, or if you wish to, you can take it up through and out. Okay, if I just come back a little bit, make sure the palm is facing away from you, try not to have it in. Looks like a periscope. Okay, so we take the arm up, kitchen. That's what you're looking to do. And then on the way down, okay, all you're looking to do, ladies, come round the back, through the hair, and then back out to the side my most famous part on that so there you go so there's a few basics on dips and drops for you uh, i have gone a long way over what i normally do sid abuse yes i'm afraid so i'll, I'll bring sid back just so you can be with me for the last part of uh, of this so, uh, so yeah these are all now available via youtube this video will be available the podcast available as well on itunes it's also now available on spotify as well if you just search me out Richard Bovesan, apparently meant to leave reviews and that helps things, I don't know why, but never mind, okay? So, next month, I'd love to have any other requests if you want to do it next month. First Friday of the month at one o'clock is when I'm doing these regular podcasts. So from myself and Sid, thank you very much. We'll see you again next month. Thank you very much.